Ladies and gentlemen, today is April 1st, 2013, and this is The Can Kale Show, episode 76, where we learn to be better artists. Yes, that's right. I teach you to be a better artist because I am a better artist than you, right? That's the way we work around here. My name is Ken Lafferty, and today we are going to be learning how to create the most beautiful portrait of a giraffe you've ever seen in your life. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane over here. We can see uh, zombies coming in. Awesome. Gotta love it. Alicia submitting something else from from Emma. I think that girl does way too much fan art. That's, that's just way too, that's way too crazy. Alicia, you need to stop doing too much fan art. All right, and we're going to go ahead and move into our tutorial. Because I am the master, and I am glad to appease you for one hour a day for your lessons on drawing giraffes. Normally, and I say that with confidence today, right? Because normally we do joint study sessions and, you know, I usually don't know exactly what I'm talking about. But today I am the master. And I am glad to show you, I'm glad to show you my personal techniques when it comes to drawing giraffes, right? And the reason why you want to get good at drawing giraffes is because they're actually one of the most sought after drawings in your portfolio, right? So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to draw in the head shape, right? We're going to draw in the head shape here. <laughs> and notice you want to have like flow, right? I'm talking about flow. I talk about all the time about how I like to have just good flow in it. So it just feels good. It just feels right, right? So do what I say because I'm the master, okay, of this kingdom. All right, so the other cool thing about giraffes is they have these really, really cute little lips that stick over here. They're little, they're little nuzzles, right? Little muzzles sticking over there. And they got their little, little nostrils here. That's really nice. And again, um, when I was working at Riot, this was actually one of the biggest things that I saw a lack of in people's portfolios, right? Because I just didn't like... I mean, people had, like, pictures of armor and, you know, like, creatures and stuff like that, but they didn't have any giraffes. It was like, why would you not want to draw a picture of a giraffe? Why, why do you have no pictures of a giraffe in here? So, naturally, I decided that I need to take this message and pass it on to you guys and show you guys how you can have this in your portfolio so you don't end up like all the stupid people that submitted portfolios with a surprising lack of giraffe. Okay? So we're moving on here. Now, um, the cool thing about a giraffe is that they have these little brow lines over here, right? Gotta love that. That's good. And then their eyes kind of like sit down like this. And this is where you want to really like capture the emotion. You want to understand what he ate for lunch. How, how is this affecting his mood? What did he dream about the night before? This is all going to be said in his eyes, right? And there's all kinds of different styles to make the eyes in. But I think the most important style, or the, the coolest style, aka the style that I always use, so it's the coolest, is going to be the cute little straight black eye. Gotta love that. Okay? So let's go ahead and continue with this, right? And we gotta make sure that we have our nice long neck, right? We'll have him kind of turning, right? We wanna have some nice flow, like he's turning his head and he's looking over here, right? With like laser vision. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. I'm going to go ahead and keep that arrow in the composition because I really want to lead the viewer's eyes off of the canvas, right? Because I'm planning to hang this in a gallery where there's another giraffe to the left of him, right? To the left of him. So I want people to have their eyes led off of the canvas and then onto another piece. And so in order to do that, you know, sometimes it's good to have like a human looking that way too, right? If you have like human eyes looking to the left, then naturally everybody else's human eyes are going to look to the left too. All right? So, in fact, I like that. I'm going to keep that in too. I'm just going to keep those eyes right there. Okay? So, uh, it'll be leading the eyes off the canvas to another piece on the left side. Okay? So, let's really talk about, let's zoom in here and get in on some of this detail here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just like add in these uh, the details of this hair here. And there's all kinds of different hairstyles that you can really go crazy with. Like, uh, feel free to feel free to just kind of play it up a little bit, right? You can give them long, lovely locks, or you can give them like a little broccoli kind of 
kind of uh, afro thing, right? And I think either way is good, right? In fact, I think I do want to give him like afros. Let's give him like some afro tips on these things, right? Because we want to make sure that we want to make sure that our giraffes have style, right? So let's go ahead and give him some afro tips there. Because afros, as we know, make everybody look cooler. All right. There we go. I like that. That's good. All right, so let's continue. Uh, the next thing you want to do is show the age of your giraffe, right? Because it's really important that you don't draw them too young because it's just kind of, I don't know, like pictures of young giraffes, I don't, I don't think they're, look, they're looked upon well by the art connoisseurs, right? <coughs> I like older giraffes because it makes them just look wiser, right? Older giraffes will always make your piece look better. <coughs> as I cough. By the way, I hope you'll forgive me because I am suffering from <coughs> a terminal illness. And the only cure is to actually draw giraffes, which is another reason why you should get into this. All right? So, uh, yeah, I don't have long. I, I wouldn't have long if I wasn't doing this. So I hope you guys can understand, but also for the good of your portfolio. So the way to show age on your giraffe is to show the little hairs that come down right here, right? And you want to make sure to have all kinds of different lengths and sizes and all that stuff, and you can just be as crazy as you want with it, right? All this hair coming down. <coughs> and it's really important that you focus on the detail here, okay? And then he's got all these little, like, whisker spots, right? This is going to help add character and show age to your, to your giraffe. It will make him look wise. It'll make him look wise and look like he ate some good leaves. All right? So that's what it's all about. In fact, we could give him a little bit of like a like a Fu Manchu if he wanted. You know, this is really going to start playing into the fantasy type thing, like fantasy giraffes. And I think that's a really good thing as well. I, I don't see enough of this. I don't see enough of this either. So I think this is good. This is looking good. Plus, uh, like, uh, mustaches are really in right now. So if you want to like pander to all of the popularity that is ensuing around mustaches, then uh, be sure to start putting it on all of your work, okay? Because <coughs> this is going to make you popular, and that's the most important thing that you can hope to achieve when you're an artist, right? Nobody cares if your mom likes your work. The whole world has to like your work, okay? And this is the way to do it, okay? So pay attention. This is the way to do it. Make mustaches. Make mustaches. The longer, the better. But not too crazy. You don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to look like you're trying too hard. You know what I mean? I always see all these people that make these gigantic mustaches. I'm like, dude, you're trying too hard. Right? And it just shows, right? It just shows. Do it to the point where you feel comfortable. Trust in your spirit. Like, ask yourself, how long should this mustache really be? Okay? And then once you have that answer, do not let go of it. So continuing here, we're going to go ahead and do these nostrils. This is good. Very interesting. <clears throat> Let's see what you guys are saying over in the chat really quick. <sighs> I wonder if he'll do this for the whole stream. Wait, what are you talking about? Of course I'm going to do it for the whole stream. That's what I always do. I always give tutorials for the whole stream. What are you, crazy? What do you think, I'm just going to like back on and do something else? No. We need to focus on this. This is important. All right, so continuing. <clears throat> <laughs> you guys are funny. You think this is some kind of joke? You guys think this is some kind of joke? I don't think so. Alright, so continuing. You've got our good little giraffe here. Good little giraffe. That's good. Let's make sure I didn't blow out the microphone. I yelled like that. Yeah? Good? Good. Good. If you guys can still hear me, let me know. If not, I'm just going to keep talking, and then the rest of the stream is going to be silent, which I'm okay with, because I need to learn to start talking more with like my gestures, right? I need to learn to start talking more with my gestures, so that way if there's no sound, you guys can still understand what I'm saying, right? Right? Or, right? <clears throat> You're right. My left. All right, moving on to the ears. 
Okay, so um, another thing that I've been noticing with uh, the latest draft drawings that I've been noticing is uh, people just, they're going for too much realism, right? Like normally the giraffe ears look like this and they have like all these little folds in the skin that are happening here. But I want to ask you to just not do that. In fact, uh, I think what's happening is that people are just becoming too disconnected with their giraffes. So I think what we need to do is we need to add a human touch, okay? So if you guys tuned into the the uh, tutorial a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the C3PO technique, right? And that's basically how you compose an ear, right? And you can actually use this technique on any type of animal. In this case, we're doing it on a giraffe. And what it's going to do is it is going to pull your viewer into the feelings of the giraffe. It's going to it's going to communicate your message so much better because people are going to see that you're being serious. That you really want to humanize your character, and people are going to love it, right? So let's continue because I want to get to the colors. We're actually going to finish this today. We're going to finish this this portrait as far as we can. Get as much of this portrait done as possible. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. That's looking good. Looking good. All right. So C three PO technique. Basically, what you want to do here is you do a C like that, right? Three. P, right, like that, and then O, O is the, the ear, all right, so that is how you make a human ear. <clears throat> okay, so that's looking good. Now, can you guys see, like, really what's happening here? I really want you guys to pay attention here. Like, look, look at this giraffe, right, and in fact, we're missing some other signature marks here. He's looking very humanized, and I really like that. I feel like I'm able to connect with him, and I feel like I'm really understanding the emotion behind the piece. Right, but uh, we also need to not forget about the little spots, right? Because drafts have little spots. And if you guys tuned into my design tutorial, you'll remember that you don't want to do circular spots, right? Circular spots are not good. You want to do squares. Squares are awesome with design, right? So all of your all of your squares, in fact, all of your designs in general, should just revolve around squares, because squares are just easy to understand. And people just look at them, and they're just like, I've seen that before. So it automatically relates with anybody who's going to see your piece. It will automatically give you an edge in any design that you create. Okay? So let's go ahead and put the rest of these squares on there. Put the rest of those on there. Yeah. I like that. This guy is looking very, very good. <clears throat> um, I like these afros, but they're looking a little bit like broccoli things, so I'm going to go ahead and like put a little comb in there just to help communicate to our viewer that this is an afro, in fact. Okay. And that gives them some cool style, right? Because giraffes these days just don't have enough style. They don't have enough style. They all do the same thing. They all just sit around and eat leaves all day, and never worry about, you know, being different or being unique or significant. I don't want to worry about that, but I am setting out to show the world differently. All right, so that's good. We have some good flow lines moving through here. We got a great composition leading us off the edge of the left side of the piece, which is going to be hanging in the gallery, which there is going to be another giraffe that I want the viewer to be looking at. Okay, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and move into some color, all right? And we'll finish off this this uh, composition piece. Now another really cool thing about composition, the best thing you want to do here is um, I think it's really good that you know you want to think about your horizon line, right? So the horizon line for this guy would probably be like that, right? So the coolest thing that you can do to a picture to make it look really action-packed is basically take this and then just flip it like, like that, okay? Make it look like that and it doesn't matter that you're cutting off like some detail that you put in before, that's totally fine because uh, people are still going to know that you did it because you're going to write a little note next to your next to your your exhibit, right? That, that basically describes what you're drawing and then when you decided to crop it, there was like a comb there. And then you'll draw like a little doodle of a comb right there so they won't forget. And they'll be like, oh, wow, I can't believe it. He decided to sacrifice the comb in the afro to create such an amazing composition. And that's awesome. But now notice that our composition has changed, or the flow has changed. So now he's looking down. So I probably put the other piece that the giraffe is going to be looking at on the floor at this point, right? Because people are going to look 
Yeah, we're going to look at the floor because that's where the giraffe is looking. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue with this. Let's add some color. Let's add some color to this, okay? So giraffes, as you know, are usually kind of like a yellowish color, but I want to make this one a little bit different. I want to make him kind of blue, right? Because we're not setting out to be like everybody else, right? We got to make a name for ourselves. We got to be noticed. So, with that in mind, we make giraffes that are blue. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to impress everybody that sees your piece because they're going to realize that you're not conforming. You're not conforming to the rules. <coughs> Ah, excuse me. You are not conforming to the rules of the world. The rules of the wor world. Why is that so hard to say? The rules of the world. I want to say the rules of the road. Which are actually rules of the world as well. So, you want to show people that you're not a conformist. You think for yourself. And you do what you want, right? So, what's really nice about this is that you're going to start showing the world how different you are. And you're going to start making a name for yourself instantly. People are always going to remember you as the artist that draws the awesome mustaches on the giraffes, right? And has such amazing compositional and design skills that works with squares and circles and rectangles. Stays away from things like trapezoids, tear shapes, and, and uh, any other kind of asymmetrical shape, right? Because we don't want to throw off, we don't want to throw off our viewers too much, right? We want to make sure that they're nice and, and comfortable. All right. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's see here. So next thing we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and fix this here. Let's fix the neck. <coughs> let's fix the neck. Let's finish drawing this down. And normally, like this is what I described, like you're gonna write that note later on, but uh, it's good to just kind of leave that there. That way, it shows your process, right? I always talk about showing your process when you go on for an interview. I think that's really good. So I'd actually just leave that note there. In fact, I would just put like note, remember, re remember, note. That way people can see your thought process and they can see all the work that you did going into this, right? So next up, we're going to go ahead and throw in some shading, okay? Or actually, wait, wait. We have to first figure out what our ambient color is going to be, right? Let's figure out what our ambient color is going to be. Now we're going to work with complements today, right? Because complementary colors are always awesome. And they always make it look like you know what you're doing. So the background is going to be orange, and then our giraffe is going to be blue. And it just really, really naturally looks nice to your eyes. But you want to be careful that you don't use too many complementary colors. Otherwise, again, you'll look like you're trying too hard, and you'll look like you're trying to appease the masses, right? Which is good in some ways, right? But just so you get popular enough, then you want to back off, okay? That's the most important thing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move into the shading, as I said. So let's create another layer over top, and we'll alt-click between that. And let's go ahead and throw in some shading. All right, so let's first consider where our light source is coming from as well, right? You want to think about these things. So let's say that our light source is coming from over, over here, right? So let's go ahead and make like a nice bright gradient. So it's like, hey, this is where my light source is coming from. It'll clearly communicate to your readers because if you don't show a bright gradient that represents your light, people will get kind of confused, right? doesn't matter how many shadows and lights you put on your character, they're still going to be confused unless you have a nice bright spot in your picture. I'm seeing a surprising lack of this in a lot of art today, and it really bothers me. So make sure you have that. As I cough. <clears throat> it is time to blow the nose. <clears throat> it's good. It gives you time to think. It gives you time to think and, and plan your next moves. Alright, so another reason why we decided to do that 
was because you're going to have the light coming from the top right side, right? So um, you want to make sure that all of your light is looks like it's coming from the other side. Like the light is here, so that means the shadows are all going to be over here. Whoops. I did that wrong. So all of your shadows are going to be over here. And the reason why you're doing that is because you want to show that, again, you do not conform to the rules of the world. Right? You do not conform to the rules of the world when you make your own rules. And again, this makes you stand out. It actually makes you more attractive, too. I, a lot of people have been arguing with me about this, but I stand by it. Right? It makes you a more attractive person when you show that you don't care about the rules of the world and of art. All right? Or, well, the rules of art is that you don't care about the rules of the world. I think I said that right. <clears throat> if not, then whatever, it's all good. Same thing. Just write it down, write it down, and keep it in the same place. Okay? Okay, so we got that going on. And now let's go ahead and add in some extra light here. Let's throw in the lights from the other side. That looks good. Put in some green. I like it. I like it a lot. Now let's make sure we have that nice, you know, having these hue shifts within look really nice. Like you go from blue to green, orange, and like the more vibrant colors you can put in the background or just like in your entire piece. Basically, like this is a secret that not a lot of people like to give up, but, and a lot of people have come up to me and told me this, like they say, Keenan, don't, don't give away that secret. Right, but I, mean, I really like you guys a lot, and I decided that I want to tell you. Okay, so the secret to making any great piece is all you have to do is simply choose as many colors as possible. Right, so you want to get some of this color in there, you want to get some of this color in there, and bright, vibrant colors. Right, F bright, vibrant colors are awesome because nobody likes like gray, stay away from gray, stay away from blacks. Just use all the bright, vibrant colors you can, right? And squares. Remember, squares are the name of the game. So put in squares. Okay, let's go ahead and get some uh, nice light blue in there. Some blue, that looks good. Now let's color the note blue. I like that. There we go. Color the comb blue so people know what color it was. And uh, they will further appreciate your sacrifice. Yellow. Yellow is awesome. Yellow, I think, is one of the most beautiful colors in the world, right? It just makes you think of like all these different kinds of foods. It makes you think of mangoes. It makes you think of makes you think of bananas. It makes you think of I don't know other things that are yellow. And your viewer is gonna pick up on this and be like, "Wow, I never realized this before, but yellow is my favorite color." And how nice of the artist to understand that and put it into this piece, right? Put some orange in there. Like it. I like it a lot. And we got plenty of red, so that's good. Cool. But make sure you don't paint over that bright gradient, right? Because we got to know that that's where the light is coming from. In fact, let's put two in. Let's put two in. So that way we appease both masses. Because right now I feel like this piece might be getting a little bit too crazy. I'm going to draw it back a little bit. So let's take this gradient, duplicate it, and put it on the other side as well. So that way people will be like, oh, okay. So people will see this and be like, whoa, he's writing his own rules. But then the people, the conformists, will look at this and be like, oh, okay, he's following the rules. It's okay. We don't have to go crazy. We're safe. We're safe. All right. I was about to sneeze. Ah, but it totally just went away. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully, uh, someone said the stream may have crashed, probably due to the high amount of skill that is taking place within this. I understand that. That's a chance I'm willing to take. It may have also been because I gave away the secret that artists have guard for their artists have guarded for their entire lives. <clears throat> Autists have guarded. <clears throat> All right, just throwing in some deep shadows in here. And then we're going to move into the overpainting stage, right? That's where we really start to add in the detail, make it look really nice. Cool. All right, guys, and how are we doing on time? Whoa, it's 7.30, man. 
we've got we've got a whole nother half an hour. Although I think I'm going to go for about 10 more minutes. Usually I like to go for an hour. I was thinking about going for about three hours today because of just all the content that we had to cover. But in interest of uh, not giving away too much, I think I'm going to end this in probably the next 10 minutes. So ready your question rocket ships and prepare to launch them over the the Tupperware of the galaxy, please. Load your questions into the Tupperware, the GLAD Tupperware. Launch them with the rocket ships into the stratosphere where they will collide with the space station that is the k and space station. And I will grab them, I'll answer your questions, and then send them back to you on a pod back to Earth. To where the common primitive people on Earth live. All right. So let's go ahead and move into overpainting. And I like to call this the OP layer because it is, of course, overpowered. This is where all the power comes in. All right? So I'm going to move right into this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some color. We're going to add some, like, of uh, the eye. We're going to add the eye of the, the giraffe in here. Okay? I think this is really good. Let's have like a nice hot specular on that. So it looks really good, really nice, really shiny. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. And again, keeping in mind, more vibrant color is always better. So feel free to just blend that right in. Okay? Get some of those darks in there. And again, don't worry about being too clean. You don't want your art to be too clean. Okay? Make sure that there's still plenty of brush strokes in it. So that way people can tell that it was done by a human and not by a machine that will soon take over the earth, right? Because some people get scared easily by that. So we have to make sure that we show that we are human. And humans are prone to mistakes, small mistakes. Not huge mistakes either, otherwise people will think you suck. And you don't want people to think that, because then you're not going to get popular, okay? All right. Continuing. Let's go ahead and just finish this up. Let's add some more detail in here. I like this. I like this. <laughs> Good. And make sure to like show that texture in there, that like that fur texture. You need people to know to make sure that we need to make sure to let people know that this is an animal, right? So you just put these little flicks, these little flicks in his uh, in the texture of his face. And it will show that he is, in fact, an animal. Or in the kingdom of KNKL, an animal. I like that. An anominal. A nominal. I think that's what I will coin this. I will coin it an anominal. It's good. Put some shading in there. That's really good. I actually think this is one of the best pieces I've ever made, and uh, I'm actually pretty bummed that I didn't do more stuff like this when I was working professionally, because if I would have, I'd probably be making way more money than I was, and I probably would have owned the company by now. So uh, I'm just going to have to take what I've learned here and put it into the comic, and we'll see, you know, basically the same thing happen to that. I'm sure it'll become very, very popular, very, very successful, all because I decided to stand up above the rest of the artists and do what everybody really wanted to see. And that was some giraffes. Right? This is looking good. Looking very good. See how realistic it looks? I mean, it's like... It's like an artistic expression, right? But you know you've seen one of these before. You know you have seen this. Right? You, you can't recall where, but you have seen this before. And your viewer and you will both look at it and it will just feel so familiar. It will feel so familiar and yet so artistically free that they will have no choice but to open their wallet and throw as much money as is in there at you, right? Or on the floor. They'll throw it on the floor because that's where the draft is looking, remember? The arrow is pointing, says that is where you should throw your money, so they'll throw their money on the floor onto the other piece where the other draft is sitting there, right? And let's make sure to draw in this eye. Let's make it look really realistic because the more realistic this eye looks, the better. So the way to make things look realistic is to make them look shiny. Right? So you take this eye like that, right? Then you make like the eyelids shiny. Right? Make the eyelids nice and shiny. 
Make the eyebrows shiny. Make the edge of it shiny. Put like a little little sparkles on it too, right? Because that'll show that it's clean. And people like things that are clean, right? We don't like things that are dirty. Like we like things that are clean. Good. And let's make the arrow shiny too, right? Because that's important. I want people to know that this is important. So let's put that nice little white, white highlight on that. And let's have a nice shine there, right? I think that's really good. I think it's looking really good. Probably one of the most realistic pieces I've done in a while. Aside from that painting that I did of the entire Earth that Google Maps contracted me to do. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but you should go on and check it out. All right. <clears throat> go ahead and clean that up. That's good. I like it. I like it. So we'll go ahead and conclude in about five minutes. Till then, write down your questions. Write them down on notes like this. Draw a little picture so you don't forget. And be ready to ask them questions. Hmm. Hmm. Noise78 is saying, it's so perfect. I have this really weird fear that robots are taking over and it's scaring me. Okay. Uh, this is really good feedback noise. Thank you very much because I, I think it's very important that, like I said, people that are afraid of robot overlords, they're probably going to make up the majority of the people that are viewing your piece. So you got to make sure to not make things too perfect, right? So a good way to lower the perfection of your piece is to simply begin begin uh, introducing those grays, right? Because people hate grays. People hate grays and blacks. That's boring, right? Nobody likes that. So come in here and grab like some nice gray, right? Like some nasty brown gray like that, right? And start adding some of that detail in there. Ugh, it looks gross. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. Put it on like the outside so it looks like some reflected light. Ugh, that's gross. Who does reflected light? That's way too realistic. That is way too conforming to the rules of the world. So that is how you make your piece look a little bit less perfect. Okay? Just throw in like some nice grays. Especially along the edges. Because this will simulate reflected light. And people don't like reflected light. Okay? It's actually one of the biggest missteps that I see a lot of people take with their art. Is they start doing way too much reflected light. And they make it look too realistic, and it just, it, it scares me. It really does. It really scares me because I'm just like, why, what's the point of living? There are robots. This is not a person that made this. There's a robot that made this. So, again, put some nice grays, nasty grays in there. Okay? There you go. How about some browns, too? Brown's an ugly color. How about barf green? Barf green. Gotta love that. Let's put some of that in there, too. That'll make sure that people don't like it as much. A little less perfect. All right. And it's a little too foggy around the edges. I kind of want to just like trim that a little bit. Because right? you want to show that you're neat. You, know? you don't want to be too perfect, but you want to at least be neat. Remember, this goes back to the principle of people liking clean things. Right? You want to make sure that you are semi-neat. Yeah, let's go ahead and clean that up. Yeah. And again, texture, texture, texture. Texture, texture, texture. Like that. That is the secret, my friends. That is the secret. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the question rocket ships to be launched to the Keenan Space Station in the stratosphere. Please launch your questions, and I will answer them, send them back to your pods. Send them back in pods to arrive at your doorstep with the answer. And then we're going to go ahead and finish up k, &K episode 76. Man, this is awesome. I freaking love this today.
Today was probably, I mean, I hate to brag, but I think it was probably one of the best shows that I've ever done. In fact, I don't even know if it's worth doing anymore after this. I think I might just stop forever. Because, I mean, I think, you know, now that I've given away the biggest, the biggest secret that the artists have guarded for their entire lives, like, what's the point? What's the point? There's nothing else to teach. Nothing else to teach after that. You're just going to be flapping your gums. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care. All right. That's good. And I'll answer your questions, and uh, if they prompt me to show you something on here, then I will go ahead and show you. In fact, maybe I should get Deebs in here so he can uh, take a look at the quality of my picture. Because my brother Deebs is a pretty good connoisseur. And he understands kind of the same thing I've been talking about, with, like the, the scarcity of giraffes. And I think he can offer some good insight on this. Go and throw some good texture in there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good nappy little uh, nappy little giraffe hair. There you go. Texture. I'm going to see if Deebs is actually available to come in and uh, appease this, or uh, appraise this, not appease this. The appeasing of today has already been done. All right, I can hear him coughing, so he's there. Hang on, I'll be right back. Hey, Deebs, can you come here? Okay, he's coming. All right. Um, some of the questions that are coming in here. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, hey, I need you to take a look at this piece and tell me what you think of it. I've been basically telling people about, you know, what what the art world has been lacking, and I said it was giraffes, and I've been talking about, like, composition. Yeah. You see how, like, he's kind of, like, looking down here and, like, you know, like leading the eyes of the viewer off the page is really cool because when I hang this up in the gallery, there's going to be another piece on the floor and I want people to look at it. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen that before? Like, yeah. Like some people do the same thing with like their Facebook covers and then their photos. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And then also like the human eye, you know, just in case, you know, his eyes and the, and the arrow don't do it. You know, you got this eye looking down there so people look. Yeah. Also, yeah. I see that you... Uh, paid a lot of attention to the mustache. That's also very important. Yeah, the mustache is really, really important because I was talking about, you know, uh, too many people draw like these realistic looking giraffes and they don't have enough, like, there's not enough fantasy elements into it, right? There's yeah. not enough, like, humanization. You gotta bring it in, make sure it's, like, it's nice and personable, right? You wanna be able to relate to them and understand, you know, what they're going through. And people are asking some questions over here. Let's see. What do we got here? <clears throat> How did this magnificent blue giraffe put a comb all the way up on his head? Noish78 asks. Um, well, as you know, actually I drew a comb like up on his head because so he's got like these little afros. A hair pick. Yeah. Uh, but I cropped it off with the piece. But just so the people that are viewing this know that, I, I like wrote a little note here with the, with the comb there. And I'm actually going to put it next to the piece after it gets printed out mm -hmm. in the gallery. So people will be like, oh, wow, there was a comb there. But he decided to sacrifice it. For the composition. Yes. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, but the question is, how does he get a comb up there? I don't know, what do you think, dude? What do you think he gets a comb up Giraffes there? have really, really long tongues. <laughs> they do. They do. And that, I think, is the, the answer to that question. That is a good answer. Uh, Ghost Angel is asking, lack of Death Star and TIE Fighters to make this piece feel more realistic. Can we fix this? Yes! I believe we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and look at the rest of these questions here. Uh, Lushy is asking for prints of the poster. Uh, she would like 50. Unfortunately, this piece uh, is only going to be printed once, and it's going to be for myself, because I don't really want to share it with you guys. Because I, I mean, I really do care about you guys reading my comic and supporting me and all that. I really don't like you guys that much. Not not enough to give away this. So 
Uh, I'm going to be keeping this for my private collection, but thank you for your interest. But I just don't think that you deserve it. Sorry. Um, pretty awesome looking giraffe. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if you can recreate it to any percentage of the awesomeness that it is. Noise78 is also asking, how does Riot have the audacity to not have a giraffe champion in the league? I find it highly distasteful. And um, yes, this was actually a point that was brought up a couple times when I was working there. And um, I still don't know why they haven't put it in, but I think I'm going to be taking the genius idea and incorporating it for myself into my own pieces. All right. So we're going to actually go in here and add just a little bit more detail before we end up or finish up this piece, right? So we're going to draw a little Death Star in here, right? So we got this here. And this is actually going to be the light source, right? It's going to be a glowing Death Star. Okay? Glowing Death Star will show off just enough light, it, or just enough light. It will give off just enough light that it will be lighting our giraffe's face. And that will be very good. Let's have it like charging up its beams, right? Because that's something that's always really good. And it gives us another reason to include a nice bright color. In fact, it doesn't look bright enough. It needs to be brighter. Yeah, and it's like having it shoot like across the entire screen. And what this is going to do is it is going to divide your piece into two parts, right? Because normally the human eye cannot take in something of this much intensity at once. So what this does is it divides your piece into two parts, right? Like one and two. In fact, you should leave those numbers there. That way people know where to look first. You know, so they'll look up here. They'll take in all of this. They'll see like the ear, right? You circle things. That also helps draw attention to it, you know? And then, uh, yeah, then they can check out the rest of this piece, and then they'll be led inevitably down, okay? Now let's just draw in a couple simplified, or uh, I mean, uh, realistic TIE fighters here. All right, um, yeah, they're composed like this. That looks good, right? And these guys should also be firing lasers, right? I think these are way too, way too, way too simplified. They need to be more realistic. There we go. There we go, okay. Also shooting, okay? All right, guys, so I think that is pretty good. Pretty good. All righty then. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end episode 76 of the Kane Kale Show. Thank you guys once again for tuning in and joining me live on Ustream. People on, on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Today was actually, in case you hadn't figured out yet, a giant joke, and yes, <laughs> had some fun. Uh, this is actually just like a crazy idea that I had right before I decided to do the show that, you know, last year I really wanted to do an April Fool's show, and uh, today I decided to go ahead and do it. But <laughs> what's surprising is that it's actually kind of hard to keep up a joke for an hour. But it actually, we came up with a pretty cool piece. I kind of like this guy. I kind of like this guy. He'll definitely be going on the Facebook. Ja, Facebook. And if any of you are, have been inspired by this or want to draw your own giraffes, I think that would be really cool and really supportive, like in all seriousness, if you like that. And uh, it can be kind of like a little inside joke between us. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even know like where this idea came from. But it has been done. The secret has been revealed, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it today. So with that, like I said, we're going to go ahead and end the day. I need to go ahead and open up. <laughs> I was surprised I was able to keep a straight face that whole time. <laughs> As I'm coughing all over the place. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. So tomorrow we're going to be resuming the normal schedule. No more jokes. <laughs> I just really wanted to do this today. Thank you guys for being good sports about it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Until then, you guys take care.